Hello there. In this lesson, we will be solving exponential equations. We will start by making the bases the same in order to solve for a variable or unknown in the exponent. Let's join Keke and Gerald as they explore how to do this. Here we need to solve for x if 3 to the power of x is equal to 81. What we want to do here is try and write 81 as a power, but not just any power. We want to write it as a power with 3 as its base. Why 3? Because we want the bases of the powers on both sides of the equal sign to be the same. But why do we want to do that? That's a good question. Maybe it will help to see the problem a little differently. We can start by asking ourselves, what does the equation 3 to the power of x equal 81 really mean? Well, um, 3 to the power of x and 81 have the same value. Good. Now, what are we really being asked to do when we need to solve for x? We want to find out what number x is, so that the whole of 3 to the x is the same as 81. Right. We can also say that we are asked to find the exponent if we were to write 81 as a power with 3 as its base. And if we were to take 81 and write it as a power with base 3, we want to know 3 times itself how many times will give us 81. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. So we get 3 to the power of 4. So, if 81 is equal to 3 to the power of 4, and 81 is equal to 3 to the power of x, our x must be equal to 4. I see. Can I try one? Okay, try this one. Solve for x if 128 is equal to 2 to the power x. So the question I should ask myself is, what will the exponent be if I write 128 as a power with base 2? You learn fast, and your answer is? Well, 128 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 7. So x has to be 7. Wonderful. Since you've picked that up so quickly, let me give you a more challenging one. Find x if 243 is equal to 3 to the power x plus 2. I'm not sure. Is the whole x plus 2 the exponent of 3? Yes, it is. Well then, the question I ask myself is, what will the exponent be if 243 is written as a power with 3 as its base? So, 243 is, let me see, 3 to the power of 5. That means that x plus 2 must be equal to 5. Now what? After getting through the trickier bit, I'm surprised you don't recognize it as a linear equation. Whoa, I can't believe I missed that bit. So, x plus 2 equals 5, and 3 plus 2 equals 5. Then, x must be 3. Nice one. So, from these two examples, we can form a general rule. As long as our bases can be made the same on both sides of the equation, our exponents will be equal. Are you ready for another challenge? Okay. Here's our next problem. Solve for a if 4 times 5 to the power a is 100. This one's kind of like the first one we did, except that there's a 4 times in front. This 4 times is a little confusing. So, what you need to do is to find a way to get a on its own in the equation. How do you do that? You can use the same principle that's used in any equation. In order to get the variable to stand alone, you perform the opposite operation to what's already being done. But remember, in order to keep the two sides equal, you need to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. This means that since we are multiplying by 4 on this side, we'll need to divide both sides by 4. That leaves us with 5 to the power of a equal to 25. Now it looks like the first example we did. I can take it from here. It's all yours. Well, now we know that 5 to the power of a is equal to 25. But 5 to the power of 2 is also 25. 
That means our A should equal 2. That's easy. Remember, we always want to write the equation so that there's a power on each side of the equation and that they have the same basis. Once we've done that, we can apply our general rule to solve the unknown value. Now, let's try one that will really test our skill in using this principle. What should the x value be if 5 times 5 to the power x minus 1 is equal to 6 to 5? That looks like a combination of all the examples we've done so far. Well spotted. So how would you go about solving this equation? I think the idea is to try and get a single power on each side of the equal sign, right? Correct. So the first thing I would do is to divide by 5 on both sides of the equation. This will leave me with just 5 to the power of x minus 1 on the left and let me see, 125 on the right. 125 becomes 5 to the power of 3. And now that our bases are the same, we know that our exponents must be equal. So x minus 1 is equal to 3. That means x is equal to 4. I'm impressed. But there was another way to simplify this equation as well. You could have simplified the left-hand side of the equation first. 5 times 5 to the power x minus 1 equals to 6 to 5. Do you remember the law for multiplying powers? Sure. It's something like we add exponents when bases are the same. That's right. So let's look at 5 and the 5 to the power x minus 1. This 5 is to the power 1 and the bases are the same. So we can add the exponents to get 5 to the power of x. And if we write 6 to 5 as 5 to the power 4, our bases are now the same. So we know that x is equal to 4. That's what I like about maths. We can find the solution in different ways and still get the same answer. Unfortunately, that's exactly why some people find maths difficult. They find different solution methods very confusing. But this second method is necessary in certain cases. Let me show you what I mean. Solve for n if 3 to the power n times 3 to the power n minus 2 is equal to 81. The first thing we want to do is write the unknown n as a single power on the left side of the equation. Why can't we divide by 3 to the power of n instead? Well, we would end up with n on both sides of the equation, which won't help us solve for n. We want to write the power with the unknown on one side only. So let's rather simplify the left side by applying the law for multiplying powers. This will work because the two powers have the same base. So when we simplify this side, we get 3 to the power n minus 2 plus n. Simplifying this gives us 3 to the power 2n minus 2, equal to 81. 81 can be written as 3 to the power 4. This makes our bases the same. So 2n minus 2 is equal to 4. Then by adding 2 to both sides, we get 2n equals to 6. And finally, by dividing both sides by 2, we get n equals to 3. We have come to the end of the first lesson on exponential equations. Make sure you do the second lesson as well to discover how we solve exponential equations when the bases are not the same. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Exponents Task video. You will also be able to learn more about exponents on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.